good to be in the old suit again. And this is actually the original suit that I wore at the Fireside Tales, one that I usually wear is in the wash. We're back at the old place, the old backdrops here. And I thought I'd go ahead and tell you all a rather odd tale, a story about a boy named Harry Spitz. Now, Harry Spitz was about 11 when, well, a funny name aside, this story is a bit of a tragedy. He was playing on the sidewalk when a driver came and hit him, and to this day no one knows whether the driver was drunk or not. But anyways, the whole town mourned for Harry, and um, his father, Howard and Annabelle, took him to Riverside Cemetery, and they found a perfect spot under an elm tree where they thought um, the, the perfect place for him to rest. Anyways, all of his friends were there, and all of his family, and um, the thing about Harry Spitz was that he, he, he had a very distinct look about him. He had this pale, these, this pale white skin, and these bright blue eyes, and this curly blonde hair. Anyways, they, they put him in the coffin, and um, his father put a teddy bear beside him, and another woman put a red rose right on his chest. And anyways, uh, they closed the coffin lid, and they, they lowered him down into the ground, and they, they put the dirt down on him. And the preacher said a few words, and um, he, he told the boy that soon enough he would be um, living anew, I suppose you could say. Well, anyways, um, uh, they left him, and many years went by, and no one thought any more of Harry Spitz. It was about forty, in fact. Uh, the, the seasons went by, uh, from summer to winter to autumn uh, to spring, and uh, and continuing that way. And anyways, um, one day the uh, graveyard digger was out, and uh, he was looking around when he heard a loud noise, a loud bang, and he, he ran over and he saw that the ground was cracked right next to Harry Spitz's grave. Anyways, a bunch of people came in, and they, they tried to figure out what had caused this, this large crack in the ground. And they soon realized that they didn't actually know. It wasn't an earthquake. It wasn't an explosion. There was no, like, um, leak under the ground that could have caused it. Well, anyways, they decided just to be on the safe side that they better get Harry Spitz's grave out of there. So a bunch of men came, and they dug up the grave. And anyways, it was lifted up, and the coffin lid actually popped open. And as they looked down into the coffin, they saw that the boy was lying there. And the strange thing was that it looked exactly as he had when he was buried. He had the same pale white skin, the same bright blue eyes, the same curly blonde hair, and the teddy bear was lying there beside him, as well as the red rose, exactly as it had been when it was first laid on his chest. Well, anyways, uh, the people came, and they, they looked at this marvel. They couldn't figure it out, and no one ever figured it out. To this day, it remains a mystery. I suppose you could call it the mystery of Harry Spitz. And with that story said, I, I would like to make a little bit of an announcement. I'm not planning on quitting the Fireside Tales. I've grown rather a bit of an attachment to it. However, I was thinking of taking a little bit of a break. I'm, I'm going to do some new things, and I'm going to tell two more stories here at the Fireside Tales, and that I'm going to end off once and for all. So, um, unless any of you have a big problem with that, and you can leave it in the comments, uh, this might be one of my last Fireside Tales. So let's end it off the way uh, we usually end it off. As always, sweet dreams, and good night.